uh, Gleevec, it's called, huh? the commercial name of it. Now they go for philanthropy. Huh? And what should Daniel Vasela, the head of, 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 uh, of, of the artist, what should he do? When he finds out that large part of the middle income countries now, Vietnam, China, Brazil, Mexico, where most of the people live, they can afford to diagnose the leukemia. But they cannot afford to pay the patent cost for the new drugs. This is not settled. The Indian court, uh, someone started to make, make a generic version and broke the patent. And they were brought to court by Noviartis, India Function, a foreign company, can bring people to court. And the court very cleverly referred the case to the World Trade Organization. And it's not settled yet. They didn't say it was right to break the patent. They didn't say it was wrong to break the patent. They referred it. Because what we need today is some more clever, clever business models. You know? There's no way we can have good drugs which are not being used. But on the other hand, I don't complain that these pharmaceutical companies are greedy. Because as far as I know, Mercedes and Volvo doesn't provide ambulances to Africa. But they're badly needed. Neither do Land Rover. Uh, so what can we expect that they do? <coughs> I, I always regarded the market, the free market forces, the corporate sector, to be like the horse on the old farm. It was the horse, the force of the horse that brought food on the table. And my grandpa taught me to be very polite to the horse, never talk bad of the family's horse, you know, to pat it. We didn't eat the horse, you know, it was sacred <laughs> almost the horse. But one thing they never did with the horse, they never asked the horse for advice. <laughs> <laughs> they never let the horse decide what to sow on one field or the other. That's how you should deal with corporate sector. Respect them for what they are good at, but it's our responsibility who are outside, who are in academia, in government, in non governmental organizations, to set the rules and regulations in which they will function. Uh, and, and, and here, high income country, cochlear implant. Deafness is fading away in Sweden with screening now at birth. And the right for everyone to have bilateral cochlear implant before the age of one. It costs about 30,000 30, euros, 20,000, 30,000 euros on each side. So it's 40,000, 50,000 euros. Just yes, the device. Is that a human right? Does every deaf child have the right to that? No. It's quite, quite, quite provocating now how, how to handle this in the world. And this is also a breakthrough. It's not that sort of. You know, this pharma industry will do a little improvement cunningly and try to earn money on something which was not really good. This is good. Eh? And, 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 and we need several <coughs> tiers. We need several tiers of health service. And we need to be much better of it. I think we who do research in health, we, become, we do too much advocacy <coughs> together with our research. Eh? Poverty and lack of resources is so serious, it needs independent research. Let others do uh, advocacy. The researcher should provide, provide uh, the findings. Richard Dole, that embarrassingly not, didn't get the Nobel Prize. Eh? He passed away, uh, the, the, the British physician who found the link between cigarette smoking and cancer. Uh, we made him... Eh? He was here, yes, and he, he, he gave a lecture, he became honorable doctor. And he said, a researcher should never communicate their own finding to the society, because they always have a conflict of interest with their own study. And basically, they ask more, want more funding. And they're going to tilt the results that gives them more funding. The results of research should be communicated by a smaller group of each area of research which are not involved in the crucial studies. So the most important thing is to provide the good research independently, and then it will be conveyed. And that was, to me, it was very interesting, interesting thoughts. Huh? And how do we understand the world? We still talk about developing world. Huh? This is UN's regional classification 2010 in the excellent publication about child mortality, which has been done. And, uh, and Tessa in UNICEF is leading this group. And she says that developing countries and developed countries, it's countries like Korea is a developing country, Singapore, and Qatar. <laughs> the fastest developing, the healthiest, the healthiest country in the world, and the richest country in the world. <laughs> What is the intellectual content of this? It's a rare mirror from colonial time, you know? And in developed countries are countries like Albania and Romania. 
Yes, Albania and Romania have a huge uh, human resource capacity, uh, but a messed up, messed up economy at, at present. So it doesn't make sense really to, to, uh, to classify the world in, in this way. So we need, we need really to get uh, another way of doing it. And because China is a developing country, they get money from Global Fund. You know Global Fund? I like Global Fund when they started it. It's like a, an insurance system that people get the good drugs. Then they picked not the drugs I wanted. <laughs> In Uganda, they say at the health centers, they check when the child comes, they say, do you have an ATM disease? You know the money machine in America, ATM. AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria. If you have ATM, you get money, otherwise you get nothing. <laughs> you have AIDS, you get antiretrovirals. You don't have AIDS and you have pneumonia, you don't get antibiotics. It's not very clever. Huh? And China gets hundreds of millions of dollars each year to buy drugs for HIV and tuberculosis. And this is what they accumulated in the foreign exchange after Deng Xiaoping started market economy. Nothing happened here, and we're still regarding them as developing country. And then this happened. I, I tried to add the lost numbers, but my, my old PowerPoint, the graph, didn't <laughs> cover them. China accumulates $1 billion a day. Bill and Melinda Gates give $3 billion, almost everything to global health in the poorest 2 billion people. That China accumulate Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Why give China money? It's so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Because they have money. They have the entire aid in the world, the entire aid, development aid, which, by the way, I have also to compliment uh, Britain and, and, and the Prime Minister in this pressed budget situation to stand out as an example and maintain Britain's commitment. It came as a surprise, I could say. <laughs> yeah? It came as a surprise, but nevertheless, nevertheless, respect. Yeah? That was very good. It, it, it was a sort of steadiness of, of Britain, w which we greatly appreciate, because it stood out as an example. It was more than the money you provided, because it was others, yeah, Cameron, this right guy, he couldn't been cut, so how could I cut? Yeah? It, it really, he, by, by not cutting, he generated much more money around Europe, I can promise. Yeah? And, 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 and China get money. The whole seven, the whole health aid in the world, what is it now, 10 to 15 billion a year. It's two weeks in China. Two weeks they accumulate that. And we continue just because they are developing. And they are very cunningly, the coolest developing country. <laughs> 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 they give us aid. <laughs> we buy Volvo now with the... <laughs> Now, how could you be so dumb? <laughs> this, I, I showed you the map here. Huh? You can see the world, high-income countries, middle-income countries, low-income countries. I, li I like that division because that's fact-based. It's a cut-off. The World Bank has it, and we can discuss. <coughs> then the problem is that the variation within the country is also wide, so it's not enough. Huh? Especially India, we have this. And I think I'm going to end this by giving you another date, which I think was very important, the end of the Second World War, the 15th of November 2008. And I'm going to honor the American president, not the present one, the past one, George W. Bush. And listen very carefully, because this is the only moment in your life you will hear a Swedish public health professor honoring George W. Bush. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. It's true. No, he was generous with PEPFAR, let's say that. It wasn't so cleverly designed in all aspects, but he was generous with that, that we have to, to, uh, to, to state, you know. But here is in the fall of 2008. The Americans were nasty to him, called him lame duck, and he got a very bad headache. Huh? It's called Lehman's headache, you know. And no one could cure it. He was looking, they said, you need money to cure this. So, so he went for the pocket. It was absolutely empty. He had lowered the taxes. He had a big hole in the pocket. He had no money when he so what do you do if you have no money? We know that from poverty research, you know. You go for your social network. So he went to the G7 and he asked them, do you have money? <laughs> and the Japanese, the guy here, he panicked and said, no, 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 we have nothing. Absolutely nothing. We have prices left on you. We can't help you. Don't even think about it, you know. And George Brown, he talked about, about Northern Rock, you know. That was the only thing he was saying, Northern Rock, all the time, you know. And, and Sarkovsky, they talked about Renault and, and Opel in Germany. So, no one was there. And then he phoned Kevin Rudd. 
he phoned Kevin Rudd. I could go to the wider friendship area. And Kevin Rudd said, you have to gather G20. What's that, he said. Well, that's Sarkozy's <laughs> idea. And there, there's, there's a documentation coming out in Australia that this is real. It was Kevin Rudd who convinced him about that, at a long, long telephone conversation. And so he did. He followed the advice. And he did the right thing. He gathered the 20 most powerful for the G20 meeting in Washington on the 15th of November 2008. And you can see, headache is gone. It's my <laughs> We're standing here appropriately. People are placed according to how much money they have. And to his right is standing a socialist, and appropriately to the left is a communist dictator, and here is a Muslim dictator, King Abdullah from Saudi Arabia. And can you see? He's leaning to Lula. <laughs> he likes Lula more, you know. He leans to Lula. Because he says, Lula, after all, you know, this guy was elected like me. He ran for presidency, he lost, and he ran again, and he won. And he <laughs> so you feel that. But this is not so clever of him, because he doesn't have so much. The money are with the dictators. <laughs> Very interesting. Because they make all the stuff, and they say, oh, no. Oil. So most of the stuff, most of the oil. You know. But they came together, and this was good. They discussed about the world. The next G20 meeting now, Bill Gates is asked to give a presentation about aid. And they're being involved. Did you see the economists now? It's about 11 to 12 billion of aid from middle-income countries, emerging economies now, to the poorest. Brazil is supporting Somalia more than Germany, France, and Italy together. It is indeed a completely new world. Eh? The world has changed. And, and, and when, we, when we look at it, it was like this, 1800. This is what was the basis for my, that BBC trailer that became so popular. In 1800, all countries were down. Britain in the leading position. Huh? Huh? In Britain, in the, Britain in the leading position. Yeah, today you will laugh a little embarrassed like this. <laughs> huh? You were. Uh, Netherlands two, United States three. Huh? Germany there. Huh? But you were rich, you were not healthy. You had a 40-year life expectancy. And not a country in the world is as devastatingly sick as Britain was then. Not even Afghanistan or Congo. That sort of life expectancy we don't have, not even with HIV and civil war. It was nasty. The world was nasty. And then it happened like this, that the West Europe got rich first, and then came the science, you know, and then uh, the policies, and then they got healthier, you know. And those who didn't get independence, they didn't get better. But when they got independence, then they went up like this. And here, look at, look at the red bubble there. Musa, uh, Mao Zedong dies here, and then Deng Xiaoping takes it here for money. He goes this way. And this is the world today, and it's a continuous world. It's not divided. The graph I gave you, you can try to make a line. Take that graph. It's free to download from our web page. You're allowed to print it as you see fit. You're allowed to sell it. It's Creative Commons Buy. You can make posters, sell it, and earn money. <laughs> None of you left. This is how you work on the internet. On the internet, you know, on the internet you should provide things free. You know, and you should, if, if someone wants to print a poster for our web page, go and do it. Earn some money on it. Yeah, that's, you're welcome. It's a new way of thinking, huh? <laughs> oh, on it, and, and it works. Congo, Afghanistan, still down here, but more than 40 years. India there up, part of India there, other parts of India there, Bangladesh poorer, Vietnam up here. You see the leftish countries there on this side, they are healthier than they are rich, and the rightish one are down here, you know. And then they continue. If you want to draw a line between the, the developed and the developing world, it's more or less here, isn't it? Huh? And then you have the Czech Republic on one side and the Slovak Republic on the other side. <laughs> How luckily that they split it. There is no such thing as two types of countries in the world. It's gone. Forget about it. Upgrade, upgrade the, the, your way of looking at the world. You can, you can indeed use Gapminder's webpage for this. Uh, we, we have this, this is the graph uh, I told you you can use. And, and um, we call ourselves Mind the Gap. We are very grateful to London, you know. Because this, this is a very good thing. We thought it was good. So we, 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 we are gapminder.org, you know. And upgrade your worldview. And remember, if Bush did it, you can do it. <laughs>